Hey, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein. Today we're going to talk about what you need to do before you file a trademark application with the United States Patent and Trademark Office. And we're going to be talking about things that you need to go actually do, as well as decision points you have to make before you can file that application. So the first thing you need to do is you need to do your own search. Okay. You need to go to the trademark office's search form. You go to uspto.gov and you go to trademarks and it has in the pull down menu and you can search right there. You want to search not just your exact trademark and your exact class that you plan to be in. We'll talk about class in a second, but you also want to look for things that are even possibly similar. So if you're filing a trademark for, let's say I was going to trademark EPW small business law, I wouldn't just look at EPW small business law. The most distinctive word or phrase in there is EPW. So I would look for trademarks that are just about EPW. And there are trademarks, I think. There's trademarks in like wildly different classes, wildly different industries, but I want to know about that before I file. You also want to do a Google search because the trademark office examiner is also going to do a Google search to see if anybody else has uses this phrase who hasn't had a registered trademark yet, or is it a generic phrase in your industry? So you want to do all those searches before the patent and trademark office does. The second thing you want to do, and this is specifically applying to those of you who want to trademark your logo, is you need to decide about a logo and have stuck to it. Can't tell you how many times I've had a client come to me, want to file a trademark on a logo. I'm like, are you sure this is the right one? They're like, yes. And then they change it. If you change that logo after you file, you got to start all over again. Okay. Once you file that trademark application on that logo, you are locked in. And yes, you can file a new one. I mean, it's not like you're not allowed to, but you need to just, you can't change, you can't tweak it. You can't change the font. You can't change the way things are arranged a little bit. No, nothing can be changed at all. It's fixed from now on. Now, color is a little different because you can file it in a black and white format. And then that gives you the ability to use different colors in the future, which sometimes can make sense. But you need to lock in that logo before you file a trademark application on your logo. The third thing you need to look at is who owns this trademark. And this is something that I eventually should make a video about <laughs> because there's a lot of, there's, it's a surprising amount of considerations that goes into who should own the trademark. But is this going to be owned by you outright? Is it going to be owned by your business like LLC or corporation? Is it going to be owned by a separate LLC or corporation? It really depends upon the exact circumstances, what's going on with your business. Have you actually formed an LLC or corporation? When do you plan to do that, et cetera? But you needed to know who the owner is going to be so you can fill out the form when you're filing it. And so if you are going to change it in the future, you can make sure the timing is right. And I did a video recently about what to do first LLC or trademark. And so I'll try to link that around there somewhere. The next thing you want me to decide is what is the class going to be? This is a huge thing. So the class is the category of the product or service, the industry that you're in. And it actually has to be fairly specific. So for example, you're not going to file one on apparel. You're going to file it on t-shirts and hoodies and hats and, you know, like a whole list of things that all go under the same numbered class, which is the class for clothing and apparel. You may end up needing to file under more than one class, but that, of course, every new class adds another $250 if you're using the trademark and office's database. Oh, by the way, side note, I highly recommend using their database. If it is at all possible, do not make up your own trademark class. And the reason is, is that it will be harder for you to trademark. It's more likely you're going to reject it. Most likely you have to go back and forth with them about it. If you use theirs, then you're not going to probably get rejected on the wording. They might tell you you're in the wrong class, but it's a different problem. So I highly recommend using their database to figure out which class wording you're going to use. And, and also it'll save you a bunch of money. And then the last thing you need to look at is what is going to be your basis for your application. So basis means what are your grounds? Like how, why should you get this application? Is it because you're using it in commerce right now? You've monetized this trademark in the United States by selling a product or service, which could be ads. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to make money from the customer, but it has to be monetized somehow. Is it because you intend to use it in commerce? That's an intent to use application, which is 1B. Or are you basing it on a foreign application? So you can base it on a foreign trademark application or foreign trademark within certain time frames, which is beyond the scope of this video. But you have to figure that out ahead of time. And if you want to base it 
on using it in the United States in commerce, then you need to know the date you first used it in commerce when you first monetized it. And you also need to have a specimen. It's either going to be for a product, it's going to be like a picture of the product with the trademark on the tag or logo or, or packaging. If it is a service, it's probably going to be a screenshot of a website where you sell the services or a flyer or something of that nature. If it's intent to use, you file those things later because you obviously aren't using it yet. So you can't take a picture of that or tell them what the first date of use is because it's in the future, but you will file that later and have to pay an additional fee because every time you file something with the trademark office, they like to charge you a little bit more money. You have to decide that all ahead of time. And so sometimes I have clients where they're about ready to launch. And so they go ahead and launch and make that first sale so we don't have to deal with the intent to use stuff. But I have other clients where it's going to be months before they are ready to launch. So we'll just go ahead and file intent to use and deal with that stuff later. It, it really just depends. Same kind of thing with filing based on a foreign application. That can be very helpful if you've launched overseas, but not here in the United States yet. But there's a very, very specific time frames for that. So you need to get on it if you're going to use a foreign application or foreign trademark as your basis. So again, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein. Really the biggest part of this video that I want to make sure that you do is to do your own search. I and, and not just in the trademark database, but also do a Google search because sometimes you'll get rejected for someone else who is just using it. So make sure you go ahead and do that. If you have any questions about what we talked about today, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll try to point you in the right direction. Thumbs up if you found this video helpful. Subscribe for more videos like this. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.